Are there any other states out there where your state prisons are having to do mandatory overtime on your days off? After working five days, having to come in on day six or day seven, mandatory? Hi, I'm Gary York, True Prison Stories. If you like this video, please subscribe. That problem is very large right now in Florida. Florida had received some information or some intelligence of possible disturbances that were going to take place in some prisons. So, of course, you have to take action to be ready in case those disturbances do occur. So they implemented a 90-day program where officers had to work on one of their days off, mandatory. But after all this had ended, they did not stop the program. The program has continued, and officers are having to work on their day off, mandatory day off uh, overtime. And this program has caused a lot of officers to be working 200 to 300 hours extra a month. Many of the officers are sleeping in their cars because of the locations where they live. It's just not worth driving all the way home and then coming all the way back to work for the next shift. Um, officers have begun to call in sick on their day off. So they're working their five man, uh, regular days, and now it's their day off, but they have to come to work because it's mandatory. So now they're calling in sick, and some of the officers have just said, hey, the heck with this. I'm leaving for the local uh, county sheriff's department. They pay more, and if they do make me work overtime, at least they pay a lot more money, and I'll get paid a lot better than I'm getting paid by the state. So it is causing a lot of issues. Now, some of the prison management has even wanted to discipline these officers for calling on sick, calling off sick on their day off. That may sound silly. It's your day off, but you're told you're going to come into work for mandatory overtime on your day off, and you call in sick, and then they want to give you discipline on top of it. So the Florida uh, PBA filed a grievance under the Unfair Labor Law Act in regards to this uh, mandatory day off uh, overtime continuing and, and still going on. Now, PBA had, uh, won the grievance and effective on May 2nd, not immediately, but May 2nd, 2019, um, officers uh, will not have to do that mandatory day off overtime any longer. But wait, folks. There are things in the works right now. Uh, Florida DOC is now working on another uh, plan for mandatory overtime, and uh, it's not out yet. So the PBA representatives here in Florida are waiting to see what this new mandatory overtime uh, uh, implementation is going to consist of, and they will review it and determine if they need to file another grievance under the Unfair Labor uh, Law Act. Now, they may or may not have to file something. We have to see what it's going to be first. But uh, it's very bad. The shortages are bad. There are 5,000 down, 5,000 vacancies within the state of Florida. They have been actually taking officers from one prison that is in better shape than another and sending those officers to work mandatory overtime at other prisons. So it has a lot of effects on the officers and the staff, and the pay is not increasing. The officers who have been loyal to the Florida Department of Corrections for 10 years plus are not seeing any rewards. So let's talk now about the effects that this is having on the officers in the state of Florida. The effects on the officers, uh, it's taking a toll in several different ways. Now, we know that extended overtime is four hours per shift. So if you're working a 12 hour shift, you're gonna work 16 hours a day on extended uh, overtime. Now we know that happens and we know that that's inevitable. Uh, we're not going to be able to stop that. It's part of the job. So if you do a 12-hour shift and the next shift is short, you may have to work four hours overtime for that, mandatory. We're talking about the effects of mandatory overtime on your days off. And I have uh, listed several of the effects that I can see that it will cause. 
Uh, you're going to miss time with your family. You're going to uh, lose m a much needed rest. Officers have to have rest. You have to be able to recover from your work week and, and get that rest you need so you can start your next week. Health issues will come into play. A lot of reasons that it will affect the health of, uh, of the officers. Uh, loss of alertness at work. You will not be as alert at work. The dangers that we face every day. Working in the prison, if you're not alert enough to respond quickly, uh, this could be uh, even deadly and harmful. Uh, quick burnout. You know, Corrections already has uh, burnout and stress because of the dangers of the job, because of the hours we work. So now we're going to add to that burnout and make burnout even quicker than it would be normally. And there are ways to avoid burnout and mandatory uh, working on your days off is not one way is to avoid burnout. That will not help to avoid the burnout. Um, bad eating habits. You're going to eat fast food a lot. You're going to eat quick food. You're going to eat things out of the vending machines that you normally wouldn't eat because you're there for so many hours. You didn't prepare for an extra meal. You brought your lunch. So now what are you going to do? You're either going to order a pizza. You're going to go to the vending machine and eat the junk out of the vending machine. It's just it's just bad all the way around. Lack of exercise. You're not going to want to exercise because you're too tired. You're too worn out. You're going to just try to get some sleep. And that one day you're going to get off, because you've already worked your other day off, that one day you're going to get off, you're going to sleep and miss a lot of family time and miss things because you're just too worn out to go out and do anything with the family. Uh, staff departure, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, people are going to leave the department and head to the local counties and jails for more money. At 34000 a year starting pay in Florida, after a while, we're going to have, well, we already have, 10 officers going out the back door and only five new officers coming in the front door. This is not working, folks. We have to keep better care of our correctional officers if we want to keep them. We have to show them respect. And we have to give them adequate time to allow their bodies to decompress and be ready to come back to work and do the job the way they're supposed to do. Now, what about our long-term loyal correctional officers? The ones that have been here 10 years plus and you're putting them through this, this uh, torture. I mean, it is torture to the body. Uh, the people implementing these programs aren't doing this. They're home on the weekends and evenings. They're doing their 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. This is torture on the body of your officers. So, what do we need to do? Well, number one, we need to implement a step program, a 10-step program, so that the officers with 10 years plus aren't making the same amount of money as an officer brand new coming in the door. So for the first 10 years, there should be a step program. Every year, for the first 10 years, you get a guaranteed pay increase. That way, step one new officer is making step one pay, and a 10-year officer is making step 10 pay. After the step 10 level, for those officers with 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, up to 25, 30 years, there should be an annual lump sum bonus given to them to show them that you appreciate their time, the decade they put into serving for you and working for you. Okay, I understand prison management, you don't have the money. That's where legislature comes in. Legislature and prison management need to work together and get this going if you want to retain officers. So we need money from legislature for a pay increase across the board to start with. After the pay increase, we need the step 10 plan and the bonus plan for officers with more than 10 years. And we need money to fill these vacancies. Now, how are you gonna fill these vacancies at $34,000 a year? You're going to have to up the starting pay to entice people to come over and work for you. But keeping the pay at 34,000 a year and then making everybody work on their day off, you're guaranteed to lose people. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see how this is affecting the staff shortage in Florida, 
the staff, uh, the staff's health and maintaining good loyal staff. So, anybody in other states having the same problems as Florida, please put a comment and let us know. Just wanted to get this out there because it kind of upsets me that the officers have to go through this. Uh, at least show them you appreciate them. Let's get rid of this mandatory day off permanently. And PBA, great job on filing that grievance and winning that grievance. For now, we've at least helped the officers. Not until May 2nd, though. They're going to let it stretch to the end of the legislative session for some reason. I don't know why they didn't make it mandatory effective immediately. But, hey... We'll take what we can get. Let's keep fighting for the officers. God bless the officers. Stay safe behind that wire. If you like this video, please subscribe.